I don't know if we can do OC Youth anymore if that song has to be taken away. He created that song himself. That kid, the, the shorter one that wore Jordan, that's him rapping. So I feel like, whoa, I, we'll just talk oh to you guys. Yeah, that's like interesting. <laughs> all the middle school boys slept in. They must have <laughs> had a really big sleepover. All right, good morning. Hello. Uh, let's zip through this real quick because we don't yeah, have like a. Good. It's it's we're ready to go. The stories they don't tell you in kids ministry crew. But this week, not not gonna. We do not have week. crew this week. So if you're one of our crew people, we don't have this week. Why don't we have it this week? Creation Museum trip. So we have high schoolers going on the Creation Museum trip with me. Uh, if you are going on the trip with me, your parents will receive an email today uh, with your emergency medical form. I don't like to keep your private material in my office, so you will fill out an emergency medical form. Bring it tomorrow at what time? So who said that? I heard it. Yep. 6.30 a.m. We are leaving at 7, so bright and early. You can sleep in the van, but I need your emergency medical to go just in case you decide to be stupid and fall off a roller coaster or something. Um, I guess at that point, if you fall off the roller coaster, we won't need the emergency medical form. But anyway, um, be at church at 6.30, leaving at 7, must have emergency medical form. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late, and to be late is to be left. Correct. Excellent. So, for those of you going on the trip, uh, a quick reminder for those going on the trip. I know the rest of you guys are like, oh, this is boring. Uh, but I, this is for everybody. If you go on a trip with me, some of you guys have been on a, a retreat, a trip, a vacation with me. Remember that this is a trip that is a privilege, not a right. And so if you decide to make bad choices, uh, you don't go on any other trips with me. So if you're going on this trip, just make sure that you are respectful, honorable. And the reason why I say that is because next year, uh, senior hires, Pastor Dirk came to my office this week and said, hey, listen, I'd like to take the teens to Honduras next year. If you screw up on this trip, you don't go to Honduras. I will not take you out of the country if you can't figure out how to, like, behave at Jesus Land. Uh, creation Museum in the nose. You're like, if you can't figure that out, I'm not taking you out of the country because I'm going to lose you in the airport, and I'll be like, eh, see ya. Um, I like to get home. I have kids to get home to. You guys can figure out how to, how to live in Honduras. All right, so make sense? Yes? Okay, so be responsible on these trips. You ruin it not only for yourself but other people if you don't. Um, okay, so that's it. Give me a game. Uh, I got prizes for games. I do have prizes for games. I'll let you pick out of my bag of Skittles. Uh, oh, and there's one bag of Lifesaver gummies. So I got multiple Skittles. There's sour ones there. So I'll let you pick a bag of candy. Uh, so when I was a kid, this was a fun one to make. I was born in 1980, so now you know how old I am. I was pretty much did my teen years in the 1990s. So this is things that happen in my day. Let's see if you can figure out uh, how old I am and the things. Yeah, that's a slap bracelet. They actually came back. They were awesome. Ring pops came out then. Those are awesome. Uh, flip phones, they're coming back because they're awesome. Uh, that will never come back. I hope that never comes back. It's like a flash drive, only like it was called a floppy disk. And like it held like, yeah, people would just looked at me like, what? Yeah, yeah, before a CD, before like flash drives and USB drives, before the cloud, that's how we stored our files. It looked stupid and it took up way too much space. And then I forget what that's called. What is that called, old people? Fortune the fortune teller. Do you guys still do that? Okay, so you guys are not like, I'm not as big of a loser as you think because you do like one, two, three, four of the things out of the five. So I'm a loser, but not as big as you thought I was. And here it is. So, uh, games work A, B, C, D. Very quick. So, what was the best-selling video game of the 1990s? Was it A, Xbox? You have to stand up and go there. Stand up. You have to migrate yep. there. B, PlayStation in the back. C, Nintendo. Or D, the Atari. Let's see how old you think I am. The best-selling... Video game system of the 90s was the A, Xbox, B, PlayStation, C, Nintendo, D, Atari. 1990s sales altogether. It would have been the Sony PlayStation, Xbox had just come out with Microsoft, Nintendo, 
Nintendo 64 was in the 1990s. That's, yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to give you five more seconds. Five, four, three. Oh, are you changing your mind back there? Just stay there. Just stay there. Two, one. You guys are all wrong. It was the PlayStation. It was the PlayStation. It was the PlayStation. Nice. Madden had just started coming out. Sonic the Hedgehog was big. There you go. Wow, you guys thought, if you, whoever sat at Atari, that's ridiculous. See, and the number one gaming system right now is the PlayStation. I'm still as cool as you. All right, next. When was the World Wide Web first introduced? The A, World Wide 1985, Web. B, 1990, C, 1995, or D, 1991? You guys know when you type in WWW, that stands for World, World Wide, Wide yep. Web, right? Okay, yes? Okay. We had this thing called AOL where it made this noise. You can't ever forget that noise. 1985. Remember, this game is called the 90s. Uh, this game is called the 90s. Saying. When was 1985, 1990, 1995, 1991? One, two, three. She was going to go for A. If it's A, I'll give it to you, but I'm pretty sure you would have been wrong. Congratulations. Yeah. Come. Hey, we have a winner. Would you like the Sour Skittles? Would you like the gummy savers, regular Skittles, or wild berry? Sour. She's sour. Would you like to keep going and, and play one more? Okay. And we'll do that. Everybody's back in because I have extra Skittles. And it only took like three questions to get rid of them all. Michael Jordan led the Chicago Bulls to how many championships? A, 5, B, 6, seven, C, 7, or D, 10? Michael Jordan led the Chicago Bulls to how many championships? Champion them ships. A, B, C, D. Does anybody know who Michael Jordan is? Is anybody, actually, you know, uh, NBA 2023 has Jordan on the front. Why? Because his number was? There you go. It's the Jordan edition this year. So I'm just, that's cool. I thought it was amazing. What? No, Jordan's the only cover 2023. Don't buy any of that other junk. It's Jordan. Like, I mean, the greatest NBA player of all times. He won how many? Zach, how many did he win? He did win six, won six. NBA championships. Six. Jumped up on the table. Woo! Yeah. Oh, man. That was, that was quite the celebration. Hey, that's more than your life. What stuffed animal fad debuted in 1993? Build-A-Bear, Cabbage man. Patch, Beanie Babies, or Aurora? Oh, 1993, Build-A-Bear, A, Beanie Babies, B, Cabbage Patch, Aurora. Anybody have a Cabbage Patch still? You guys still have Cabbage Patch? Anybody have the Build-A-Bears? All right, so uh, some of you have been to Build. Like, you have birthday parties there? Did you ever have the birthday party at Build-A-Bear? Okay. All right. I'm not as old and weird as you thought I was. We still have those. Three, two, one. It was Be Beanie Babies. Babies. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come get you some candy. You're just mad. Oh, sorry. Berry, regular, or Lifesavers gummies? Ooh, regular. All right. Sounds good. All right. I'll give you that. We'll just zip through the rest. What was the first animated feature film to be nominated for Best Picture and the Oscars? Snow White, Aladdin, Frozen, or Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Frozen wasn't even out, so. And Frozen wasn't out. I, I, I needed one to throw in yeah. there to kind of confuse people. Huh? Beauty and the Beast. Oops, sorry. You know how I spell. I'm a youth pastor, not a spelling bee champion. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Beauty. 
The dream team won gold in what year, year's games? Olympic Games, the dream team, best team ever assembled. Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Charlie Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Christian Leitner, which I don't know why he made the team, but they had to have one from college. It was weird. They got mad. Should have been somebody else. It was not 1996. It was 1992. Hmm. If you have the Michael Jordan card in that set and it's a gem mint tin, it's worth about $350. <laughs> What was the federal minimum wage for most of the 1990s? What is it now? Does anybody know what's the minimum wage right, right now? 725. Uh, 725. Okay. So, what do you think it was back in the 1990s? It was four dollars and twenty-five cents for an hour's worth of work. Some people, you go to Chick-fil-A, makes like eleven or something like that, right? It's just what's up? No, 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 absolutely not. But gas was 88 cents a gallon back then, so uh, 425 wasn't so bad. So there you go. In 1990, what was the first rap song to hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100? Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. Mama Said Knock You Out by LL Cool J. Dear Mama by Tupac. It Was a Good Day by Ice Cube. Not Ice T, Ice Cube. Three, I listen to my pot smokers in the... No, I'm just kidding. Three, two, one. It was Ice Ice, Ice, Ice Baby, Baby by Vanilla Ice. It was, it's, remember, rap hadn't fully made it. He was kind of the gap. Him and uh, 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 Hammer, uh, MC Hammer. They made the transition between pop and rap into the mainstream. So there you go. Uh, I think I got a couple more. He was elected president in 1992. Somebody. They're still alive. You think it was good old Bill, Bill and Hillary, Bill, uh, Billery? Three, two, Hillbilly, <laughs> Hillbilly. All right, we'll go with that. Um, it's on YouTube now. I'm in trouble. Uh, it was Hillbilly <laughs> Clinton <laughs> from Arkansas. Hillary and Bill Clinton, 1992. Arkansas. Arkansas, that's right. It is weird. Why is Kansas, Kansas, and then Arkansas is not Arkansas? It's spelled the same. It's really weird. Totally blew some of your minds. It is. Ar Arkansas is how it's spelled. It's so weird. All right. In the 90s, which wide leg jeans became fashion staple for tweens and teens alike? Was it Levi's, Fat Farm, True Religion, or Jenko jeans? What, what, what? I even put a picture with this one because this was in style back then. Jenko jeans. All the cool skateboarders had them. The wider the legs, the better. Jenko jeans. And then you wore, you wore the, the drug rug is what we called them. It was like the, that's back in style. The like rug shirts. There's like a sweatshirt that looks like your front doormat. Yeah, yeah. So you wore those and that. And you listen to Green Day. I don't know why. That's just what we did. Hope you had the time of my lives. Anyway, there you go. What was the highest grossing film of the 90s? Jurassic Park, The Lion King. Can you feel Titanic? Or Star Wars, Episode Uno. All right. Three, two, one. The Titanic it was the first film that people went to mostly watch again and again. And if you wanted to go on a date with any girl you wanted, you'd say, I'll buy you tickets to the Titanic. And they're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that song go? What, I forget the song. What is the song? That she's like, not, what's, how's, not a whole new world. Oh, I forget the beginning of the Titanic. Celine Dion. Ah, Anyway. Which 90s girl group was second best selling after the Spice Girls? Destiny's Child, TLC, Dixie Chicks, or the Backstreet Boys? Three, two, one. It was TLC. TLC. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Do you guys know that jam? Anybody? Okay, so some of you guys went back to the 90s and listened to some good music. But it's, it's not oldies yet. Settle down. Tiebreaker, guess the correct answer. What does the abbreviation AOL stand for? AOL. Band, you can come up here and get, get, get set. AOL. Does anybody still have, like, your parents still have their AOL account just because? There you go. All right. So 
at AOL.com. Stands for America Online. America Online. Praise and worship team. Oh, was there another one? What year was Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You released? 1994. Now it's in your head. Ah! Dwight, we're going to do a song change now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, guys, 90s. let's stand up and worship together. That, that game made feel, me feel old. Uh-huh. Like, some of that stuff was, like, still popular. Like, I was born in 98, but... Like the slap wrist thing, we used to see how hard we could hit ourselves without it hurting too bad.
so awesome. Uh, we just praise you so much for everything that you do uh, for us each and every day. Um, God, we, we thank you that uh, you came to this, this earth, that you, you lived a life um, in, in perfectness. Um, you went to that cross undeserving um, for, for the things that um, we, we did, the things that we're going to do, um, just so that we can be with you someday in heaven. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace that we did so undeservedly. Um, be with Dwight as he brings the word here this morning, and go with us throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love King of Kings. I jammed with Adam Way, and I don't know, it's just my jam. And when, what's her name? Hightower, what's the lady that sings that? When she hits that high note, when she talks about the spirit hitting the flame, whoo, lit the flame, man, I get chills every time. Anyway, good morning. Hi, I digress. Hi. Uh, okay, so let's go because I got things to do and things to say and things to give away. Uh, hey, Sarah, on your way up, bring those two bags of candy up with, with you. Just run, uh, when you, yeah, those, yep, mm, thank, thank you, you're the best. Oh, she's going fast too, speed walking. Woo, love it. All right, because I got two more bags of candy. So, all right, we've been talking, uh, don't be a dummy. This is our sermon series. If you haven't been with us, I'll recap it slightly. If not, uh, go to Otterbine Church uh, YouTube channel. You can watch the last couple of weeks. You can watch all the way back for quite a few months. So uh, if you want to re recap what we said, go to Otterbine Church, the YouTube channel. I do like the little, like, like and subscribe, but whatever. Uh, ring that bell, whatever they say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, hit that bell. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> don't be a dummy. Uh, so we've been talking uh, 
to understand uh, being a teenager, being an adult, being a, oh, the one thing, in fact, it's, sorry, my brain is going crazy because I just, this week has been so cool, so busy. We moved into our new house. Just a lot of cool things happened. Um, but my wife just went to uh, a wedding. She flew down to Charlotte. So, you know, we moved in the house, and then she left me alone with the kids. It was amazing. And I kept them alive. Yay! Um, I know. <laughs> um, so I kept them alive, but she, she listened to last week's sermon, the last couple of weeks' sermon. She listens to me, which is crazy that she listens to me. Um, and she's like, dude, I gave my speech, and, like, I, I listened to what you said. The idea of knowledge, wisdom, and foolishness and talking about marriage. And so she got to give one of those. Anybody been to a wedding? They give the speeches. Oh, you're the best person ever. I love you so much. And uh, she said, you know what I'm talking about. And the guys are like, oh, I like you and uh, stuff. And make sure you come over and have, uh, like, some soda with me. You know, you know those things? Like, get online and play video games. You better let them. Uh, those things. And so she's given the speech, and she talked about knowledge, wisdom, and foolishness. Why? Because it makes sense, and she wanted them to know that, like, when you get into marriage, when you get into any relationship, when you get into adulthood, parenting, anytime you start something new, uh, Josh, you just started a new job. You're knowledgeable about a lot of things, but are you wise about a lot of things? He's like, nope. Uh, he's like, I got to figure them out. I know that I push buttons, and then they give me money, and I give them chicken. Like, that makes sense. Most of us can figure it out. Um, Knowledge, wisdom, and foolishness. Those are the three words this sermon series has gone through. And so uh, knowledge, let's go through those real quick. Knowledge is having information, making a choice, okay? You have the information. Teenagers, you guys have a lot of information. You guys think you're super smart. Uh, you, like we talked about cars. Like, it, cars are easy. Turn left, go left. Turn right, go right. Except for when you're backing up, it's the opposite. Uh, and then, you know, gas pedal is on the right. Go fast. Stop real fast, you push the left button. Like, it's pretty simple, but for some reason, you guys get in cars, the first time you do it, you're terrible at it. We would never let you out on a road to do that. You're usually in a parking lot. Why? Because you have the knowledge to do it. You've played Mario Kart a million times. You have the knowledge to do it, but you don't have the wisdom. Wisdom is using the knowledge to make a choice or take action that is beneficial for you and others. Beneficial is the word there. Wisdom is doing things that help others, serve others. Um, it helps, uh, helps not just you and, and helps you out. When you get married, if you have wisdom, I want my wife to have good things. Why? Happy wife, happy life. Uh, so, yeah, that's how it goes. There's some wisdom there, and when you screw it up, well, not so happy. Uh, you're in a bad relationship. And so wisdom is using knowledge to make a choice or take action that is beneficial for you and the others around you. So a very simple way to prove this is right now all of you have the knowledge that there are two pieces of paper under chairs around here and the winner will take away these. Uh, do you have the wisdom to find it? There are two pieces of paper. Then You have the knowledge that there are two pieces of paper under random chairs around this. Okay, so she had the knowledge that there was, there's now another piece of paper. There he goes. Okay, uh, you, who's got the winner one? You got to open it up. Oh, you're second place, so she picks first. Which one do you want? Okay, you get gummies. There you go. So you keep that. Just frame that at home. Knowledge and wisdom. The knowledge, you guys, I just gave it to you, and I said, there are two pieces of paper under there, and whoever finds them gets candy. And then a lot of you guys took that knowledge and just stared at me. Until I go, but the person that finds them gets the candy. And you go, it took you a second, right? Wisdom is applying that knowledge to get the thing that you want or that can be beneficial to people. That might be beneficial to people around you. You can use that for your benefit. Or you can eat them all yourself. Whatever. He's like, I don't have anybody around me. It's amazing. I can eat them myself. Um, but that is what wisdom is. Uh, where's my clicker? There it is. So you guys understand knowledge and wisdom. Foolishness is the other action. Foolishness is using the knowledge to make a choice that is self-serving, harmful, irresponsible, or just simply being dumb. A lot of times we use the knowledge to say, listen, but he really loves me. Well, just because he loves you doesn't mean he doesn't have bad intentions or things like that. We use our knowledge to do something dumb. You're like, I know jumping off the roof would be fun into this snow pile, but is it wise? I don't care, you know, those things that you do. You're like, send it, you know, whatever. Knowledge, wisdom, and foolishness. Sometimes we use the knowledge we have and we go, whatever, uh, and we do our own thing. 
using knowledge to make a choice that is self-serving, harmful, irresponsible, or just simply being a dummy. Okay? Last week, so that was week one. Week two, we talked about Job's friends. In the book of Job, a lot of people go to Job and they're like, oh, it's about like suffering and hurt and how do you get through it. There's a really cool section in there last week that we talked about in Job about being a friend, being a wise friend. What it's like to have good friends and then what it's like to have terrible friends. Job's friends got three things right. They showed up when Job was suffering. To be a good friend, sometimes you have to put aside the things you want to do to help other people. Like, I had a lot of people show up to move our house. Did they want to pick up my couches that have, like, the motors in them so that the feet go up? No, trust me, they didn't. Uh, but they still showed up. Show up even if you don't want to show up uh, because that's what a good friend does. Serve them, love them, care for them. They empathize, empathize with Job. They literally put on sackcloth and ashes. They sat around, which is a sign to God that they're extremely sorry and they want you know, Job to repent. And they, so literally they sat and just think of like going to your fire pit and actually like sitting there and putting the ashes on you. Like they were, the idea is to get to the lowest of lowest of dirtiest of points and saying, God, we don't deserve this. And then to have God say, listen, I see that your sacrifice and give for, so they went and they did the hard things. They showed up, they empathized, they said, man, I'm sorry that you're going through these things, how can I help, can we get you some food, um, people do it all the time, funerals, things like that, when a family member, they just show up, and then they just sit there, and they're with the people when they hurt, a lot of times, girls, guys, when you break up with somebody, that's what's happening a lot, when our friend stabs you in the back, like, show up other friends and be there, don't, don't be jerks to them, don't take sides either, just be with them. Uh, third, they spent a lot of time with them. They walked through the wholeness of the hard. You know, some of you guys have lost parents. Some of you guys have lost grandmas, grandpas. They were there through the whole time. And sometimes they just said, hey, I don't want to do this. I know we had these plans. And you should, as a good friend, go, okay. I know I really want to go there, but okay, I'm going to show up. Why? Because the expectation is, is they will do that for you when you go through it. We live in a life that is hard and difficult. They should show up for you. Because you showed up for them. That is a wise and good friendship. They got one thing wrong, though. They mistook Job's suffering as a consequence for sin. Not all, your friends don't go through and necessarily deserve the things they go through. Sometimes we do because we're stupid and we sin and there's consequences to those sin. You get a detention when you do something stupid in class. And most of the time, you're probably the wrong one, even though you're like, but he did it first. I don't care. You still did it. Like, that's why when you fight, you both go to, like, after school suspension, like, or whatever you get nowadays. So, in the end, not all that, sometimes they're just going through a trial. Sometimes it's just a hard time in life and you have to show up. That's a wise and good friend is just to show up, be there, be commiserative, don't feed and fuel the fire. Well, you should, you should go and punch them in the face. No, that would be a foolish friend because now they're going to get an intention, a detention or uh, it's expelled or whatever because you encouraged them to do something dumb and you made it worse. Good friends just show up and they help get them on the right path. They don't make things worse. If you make it worse, you are a foolish friend friends. They made it worse with God. Well, you must have done something wrong. Well, you, you, what did you do wrong? And the whole time it's like, I didn't do it, I swear. And finally he gets mad at God because his friends made it worse. Don't be a bad friend. All right, so word I want to talk about today is chokmah. Uh, and what, it's a Hebrew word. It means to have, uh, it's kind of like working out. Anybody actually like do a sport, run, art, uh, something where it takes skill. Yes, music, uh, my musicians running. Um, let me ask the athletes first. All right, has anybody gotten into shape? You're actually not like round, like I, I'm round, I'm a shape. Yes, I get that. But have you ever gotten into physical fitness? Anybody? Some of you have been in physical good shape. Now, it takes a week to get in shape or does it take a long time? It takes a long time to get in shape, right? To, to hone your skills. Piano, uh, music. Uh, playing music, it takes a while to get things right. You practice the music so it sounds right and things like that. Now, if you don't play it for a very long time, do you walk in and just play? You're like, ooh, this is great. I can play like athletes. Do you, after a week of getting, in, or months of getting in shape, you take a week off and then you go back. Can you do exactly what you were able to do? 
No, you get out of shape, and it only takes like a week, and then you need another month to get back into shape. Wisdom is exactly the same. Wisdom is exactly the same. You could spend a long time learning and understanding, trying things, getting into a rhythm of like hearing something, making a good choice, hearing something, making a good choice. Um, Hey, listen, we're going to have a test on Friday. Okay, Thursday, I'll study. Okay, that's wise. That makes sense. You can do that over and over again. But then the couple of weeks that you're like, yeah, I don't really care. I'm going to play video games. I've got an A, whatever. How quickly, if you don't do that, does the A go away? Pretty quickly. <laughs> um, C's get degrees. No, I'm just kidding. Um, how easy is it get to get back to that A when you got an F on the test? It takes work to get back. Wisdom is the same thing. It is something that you have to work at. You're not just going to go, man, I'm awesome. I'm so smart. I know everything, and I know how to apply it. Um, unfortunately not, because why? We're humans. We sin. We have temptations of like, ooh, but that looks way better. Um, and so we do the things we don't do. Paul talks about it through the Old Testament. Ah, oh, I keep doing the things that I shouldn't do, and I don't do the things that I want to do because that would be smart and it would make my life better, but yeah, that was way more fun, but it came with way more consequences. Wisdom, making good choices, takes practice, and it also takes people around you. That's why we talked about friends last week. It takes friends around you to go, hey, that really wasn't dumb. If you keep doing that, it's going to hurt you, and you're going to get out of shape in this wisdom sense. That is why it's important to have wise friends. That is why it's important to have friends that don't push it. Wisdom, you're like, why is my life feeling so bad? Well, do you have wise people around you talking into your life so that you can take that knowledge that you have and apply it in a way that will benefit your life and the life of the people around you? If you could understand that, I promise you, life goes easy. It applies to money. It applies to jobs. It applies to dating. It applies to having kids one day. It applies to school. If you could figure out taking knowledge and applying it for wisdom, I promise you, I can stand up here and say, I promise you life goes better. Why? Because some things like Job happen to us, and if you have good friends, you get through that hard time much easier than if you have friends that are like, you must, you, you did something wrong. Well, that stinks when you have friends that don't show up for you, right? <laughs> Same thing with all the other things in your schoolwork and, and all having people around you hold you accountable. Uh, Hokma is about having Wisdom, I'll give you an example. Uh, do I have the pictures next? Yes, oh, there he is. Do you know who this guy is? Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq. Do you know who this guy is? Allen Iverson. A lot of the people over here are like, huh? Okay, Shaquille O'Neal in the 1990s. Yeah, I see how I made that connection. Ah. Uh, he was a freak of nature. In LSU where he played basketball, like, he, uh, how many backboards did he break? Because he was just so big and intimidating, bigger than anybody else in the league. So he literally just backed people up, turned around, went boom. That's like, that's the skill he developed. Why? It came easy for him. It came easy for him. So in, he just backed people down and dunked, and that's why he was a good player. He did no extra work. If you ask Shaq, like, if you ask, if you ask anybody about Shaquille O'Neal's skill set, they'd be like, he was terrible. He couldn't shoot. They used to, they, they developed this thing called hack a shack. Why? Because they knew that if he backed everybody up, he'd just turn around and go, boom. Like he was seven foot tall. He didn't even hardly need to be ju jump. He just needed to get there and go, Phew. like that was, th that, that's why we did the dunked on basketball thing this morning. See how the rim was low and they're just like, like that's all he had to do. That was the only skill he had. And he didn't become an amazingly, probably could have been one of the best players of all times if he had developed, they developed what was called hack -a They knew he would just walk down and just do that. So they'd foul him. Why would they foul him? Because he couldn't make a free throw to save his life. Like, literally, if his life was on the line, he had to shoot a three throw, he'd be dead, like, instantly. He was terrible at it. So they developed a way to keep him under control. He didn't develop his skills to become a great player. The only thing he had, and that's the same thing with wisdom. A lot of us have basic wisdom. You know, don't run into the road. Eventually, you, like, you'd figure it out. <laughs> uh, but he just had the basic wisdom that everybody generally gets as a human being in figuring out life. That's all he did. But Allen Iverson 
was like five foot tall. He was nothing. In fact, they made fun of him. They made fun of him because he was small. There was even smaller guys, Muggsy Bogues, if you remember him, like tiny guys. They had to, Spud Webb, you guys remember Spud? They had to work so hard to be in the league because they were at a disadvantage physically, but they learned the skills and they become, I feel like he was a greater basketball. In fact, he had no fear. That's Shaq, who's seven foot tall. That's just under six foot tall. And he went at, that's one of the greatest basketball players ever, has the most NBA championship. I don't know if you know, Robert Ory has more championships than most people. He made it with three different basketball teams. And Shaq, who's considered, because he could back people down and dunk, he had no fear. He went after anybody. Why? Because he gained the wisdom that he didn't care what the other people's skills, he understood their skills, they had the wisdom of, uh, of basketball in general, and he didn't care because he had better skills than everybody else. He had wisdom to become a great player, and that's what happens in life with wisdom. You might not be the smartest, fastest, best drawer, best, but if you have a passion, desire that God created you, he said, don't be this, because why? You're just going to be average. You're going to have basic knowledge. You're, you're going to be good at some things. You're God gifted at some things. Be this. Chase after wisdom. Learn how to do things to the next level, to the next skill. He, it's, it's most of you guys that know sports know Steph Curry. Steph Curry modeled most of his game after this man. Why? Because Steph Curry's not that big either. Allen Iverson worked twice as hard. He worked out twice as hard. He, he worked on his skill twice as hard. Wisdom is the same way. If you want to be smarter financially, if you want to be smarter uh, in friendships and relationships, if you want the house that you want to have, God does want to bless you. And that, this is not like, you know, pray your way to having the perfect life. That's not how it works. But there is some input for you. God loves blessings. God loves giving good things. But he loves doing it to wise people. People who sacrifice, who give, who have knowledge, and who uses that knowledge to love each. In fact, uh, in Proverbs, we talked a little bit, and, and we'll finish up here. Solomon uh, was the wisest man ever to live. And the Proverbs, a lot of them are, 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 are his, his writings. He wanted you to have knowledge and wisdom so you don't make the mistakes that the people at that time were making. And so you should read these. Why should you read these? It's like Alan Iverson figuring out how to do, oh man, his crossovers were insane. Like broke Michael Jordan's ankles. Like he was that good. And he was amazing to watch, but he wasn't tall enough to be amazing, amazing. Boy, if he was 6'6", six, six, he would have dominated the league. He probably would have been better than Jordan, I believe, because he was that good skill-wise. Um, oops, why is that in the background? I don't like that. There we go, we'll do that. Proverbs 2, 1 through 8. You should read the Proverbs regularly. Why? Because it's going to help you avoid the mistakes that you can be making as a teenager. He wrote them on teenager level because that's the, I don't want to say stupidity, but that's, they were being that dumb. Like they were just adults being that dumb. If you could figure it out now, you'd be way further along than a lot of adults are right now. Pro and th they're filled with them. This is just a small section. Proverbs 2, 1 through 8. My child, listen to what I say and treasure all my commands, treasure. You should chase after them like gold, like a piece of candy paper under the seat. You should chase after them like treasure. You should chase after wisdom as if it had extreme value because it does. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Don't just go, God, why do you make my life so bad? Like, we do that all the time. I've done it too. Don't, you know, literally, I can remember going to my back porch in my parents' house in the middle of nowhere and go, God, why did you make me so ugly? Like, seriously, no joke. Like, I remember the night and all that because all the athletes were getting all the chicks, and I was like, why did you make me so ugly? You know, I had a hunchback. Like, I didn't like it. I thought God broke me. Like, he took the day off when he was like, I was going through the factory. And so we do it. We all do it. Um, but God said, chase after wisdom. And I love where I'm at now. I was an idiot back then. Why? Because I thought this had something to do with who God created me. It had nothing to do with it. I found my wife. I've got a great life. Because I figured out wisdom has nothing to do with this. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain great knowledge of God. You will understand 
who God is and who he created you to be. That's what you're chasing after most of you right now. Who would you create me to be, God? What do I love? Where do I fit in? Those questions and answers. What do I do with my life for those that are getting older? How do I apply it all? Chase after it like a hidden treasure. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. I fear God because I've seen him in my life do amazing in things and I go, <gasps> I didn't do that. Ooh, that was cool. Like I want God to interject on more things. Let's do it again. Um, for the Lord, so for <laughs> some of you guys are going to go to theme park with me here pretty soon. Um, here's the knowledge. When I go to theme parks, roller coasters break. Um, I showed a video of that the other week. Roller coasters break. That's knowledge. Wisdom is don't get on roller coasters with me. Hey, see, there you go. Um, you will seek and gain understanding. You'll gain knowledge. You'll learn and understand who God is. Roller coasters are a silly way of saying, hey, God's way bigger than that. How did he design you? Why did he make you the way? Why did he give you the body shape you have? How can you hone and grow it into what you want it to be? Those are the things that you should chase after. That wisdom will change your life. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. You just get the basics, yes. And then he shields those who walk with integrity. The heart of life, if you walk in wisdom and knowledge, God will protect you from the things that if you're not, you go, why is my life so bad? Well, some of it's because you're stupid. Like, it's, you're foolish. You make bad choices. Well, God can't protect you, you foolish. But he will if you're wise and you make good choices. He shields those who walk with integrity. He guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. So wisdom comes from reading your Bible, getting into the word, understanding it, and then applying it. And making sure that all you do as a friend and your relationship, all you do is based on you and who God created you to be and who God designed us as humans to be towards each other. Does that make sense? Wisdom is hard to understand, but boy, as you get older and you have more life experiences, you go, oh, this God thing's cool. And you will do it more and more and you'll pray harder and you'll seek deeper and you'll start to see God not only show up, but God will start showing off in your life because that is who God is and that is what he wants for you because you return it in glory to him. All right, Heavenly Father, I pray these students figure out wisdom. Wisdom is one, one of the key foundations of understanding who you are and who you created them to be. I pray they chase after you and your wisdom daily in all their decisions and all the hardships and all of the relationships, all the ships of life. God, I just pray that they figure that out because if they do, life is amazing because you are in it and you only give good. We ask this in your precious son's name, Jesus, who put himself on the cross in our part so that we don't have to suffer like he did. We ask this in his name.